Hey guys, what's up? I'm the Electrical DIY Coach. Remember, never work on an energized circuit and never repeat anything in these videos. Just use them for educational purposes only. So today, we're going to be doing another fuse box change out. So if you come on in here, Chris, I want to show you guys. This is a really cool one that I've never seen before. And um, not that I've never seen it, but it's not one that you see very often. We see this where you do the pull out, okay? This pulls out, disconnects the power. I've already verified. You're going to want to verify with at least two forms and make sure that the power's off. I've already verified the power's off, but what's very interesting about this one is, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and have Chris just hit the pause button on the video, not the stop button. And what I'm gonna do is show you is that when you take this cover out, it disengages those fuses. So every time you take the cover off, it turns the whole power off to the whole house. That's not something that you see very often. So, and I, it caught me by surprise, I'm taking the panel cover off. Most of these, you pull the fuse box or the fuse block, and the power can still stay onto the building while you work inside the panel like a normal panel. Well, this one literally takes the fuse uh, block and everything with it and pull, turns the whole house off. I'm sitting here taking off this panel on the estimate. We were another fuse box on the other side of her home burnout. And uh, I started to take the panel car off and the lights start flickering and everything else. I'm like, oh my goodness. So I shove it back in very carefully and I, you know, continue to do that. Remember, never work in an energized panel and never do anything, you know, that if you're, you know, you're not comfortable doing it, just take a minute. Thankfully, you know, experience reigns when you're in situations like that, but could have been a very dangerous situation for someone who was, you know, unskilled. So I uh, just really encourage you guys. I'm going to show you what this looks like. And Chris, if you can go ahead and pause the video, we'll pick... All right, guys, we're going to see if Chris can get the shot up here, behind here, of what this panel cover's like. You have to physically pull it out, and it physically disconnects the, uh, the main prongs, so it shuts the power off to the whole house and the whole panel. And if you look at it here, I taped it up. If you look here, I taped it up last time I was here because I did not feel comfortable about, you know, setting that thing in there. So I just put some put some tape on it when I put that thing back on. But these prongs literally come off with the whole panel cover. So I thought, thought that was really interesting. Let's go ahead and look inside this fuse box here. So if we look up here, you notice that the two hots are coming in and the neutral. This is old cloth, likely asbestos and rayon, wrapped on a rubber coating, okay? And then they used main tap lugs right here to feed this 100 amp panel, okay? So it has no overcurrent protection except for the main fuses. They double tap their neutral here. And this lug may have been listed for double tap neutral, but those are two different sizes. I wonder if we can pull it out. You can't, it's pinched tight, but still, you know, just kind of different than what we see now. If you look down through here, I removed some of these fuses yesterday just because I knew we were one day from changing it. I'm going to shoot you some really good footage of this Wadsworth panel. If you've never seen one of those, they are great. But let's go ahead and get started with the steps of the panel change. Um, what we're going to do first and what you do first every single time, like I've taught you in other videos, what you're going to do is you are going to mark off the wires that were capped off already. So before you got there, there were likely wires that were capped off before you got there. You want to make sure that when you leave, they're not energized when you leave. So the first thing you do, step one on a panel change, every time without exception, is you're going to look for wires that are already capped off inside the panel, and you're going to identify them with red or black tape, taping them together safely in order so you do not hook them back up. A good example is right up here. This is one that has been capped off, okay? And it looked like, yes, it looks like it's over there. This one is capped off. If I'm rocking and rolling and not paying attention, this one here can get brought back in the panel, re-energized. It may be in the wall somewhere. So we have no idea what's going on with this circuit. So we just got to be super diligent when you first get there. Step one, take some red or some black tape, something and really identify it. But you still want to bring it back in the panel for safety. Or you have to put it in a junction box, okay? So you're going to identify it and you're going to set it up. So I literally go through the panel. I, we verify to make sure that it's off. The power is disconnected into this you know building right now on the inside and I'm gonna physically start pulling out and grabbing and oftentimes you'll find them taped together you'll find them just laying there you want to get those and identify those first and make sure that you do not re-energize those circuits all right Chris if you want to go ahead and pause it for me all right guys so the next step what we're gonna do is and you do these in order without fail the first thing I did is I taped off any wire that is not gonna be re-energized when I turn the panel back on Next step that we're going to do is we are going to tape our white 220s black. You're going to do it in this order every single time so you end up with the same result every single time. So what we're going to do is if you'll come in here is that we are going to every one of these whites that is landing to a fuse or a breaker if you're changing out a breaker box, 
needs to be identified as a hot or the panel will not work correctly when we hook it back up. Your water heater won't hurt, work or your dryer only will turn on and the blower won't work or the heater won't work, whatever. Um, so what I'm going to do is one at a time. I don't take any other panel or any other wire loose yet because if you get this lost, you can either fry some equipment or you can have something that doesn't work. So one at a time, I physically take each one of these wires. That's a white hot going to the fuse block. Any white that needs to be identified as a hot, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to tape the entire conductor black. That way I know when I hook it back up that it's a 240-volt circuit. So what we're going to do is, and that's the next step without fail. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and we'll catch up with you in just a second. All right, guys, so now what we're going to do, we've taped our white 220s black. And if you'll notice, there's something a little bit different on my panel change this time. All of these ones I taped with a red and black stripe. These are all heaters that are going to be disconnected. And here in December, in a little bit, we're going to be converting these to 110s. So I went ahead and marked them as a hot, but I also put the red in that I know to keep them capped off when I get the panel hooked back up because we're going to convert them later to 110s. And I actually have a video teaching you exactly how to do that in your home. This one here and this one here were the only other two uh, white 220s that I had to mark black. Now the next step that you're going to do, step three, and it's a quick one is that you are going to check before you start taking uh, off the neutrals and the grounds and dismantling the panel, what you're gonna do is you're gonna check your neutral and ground bar and make sure that there are no black wires attached to it. This is something that I only saw in the last few years. I've probably changed four or 500 panels, but this is only something I've seen maybe five times, so you may never run into this. But if you have a black wire that is attached to the neutral bar, you need to take that off of the neutral bar and you need to tape it white. And you're gonna make that your neutral until you get the circuit back on and then you're gonna go deal with the reverse polarity because somebody's wired it wrong at the panel. You likely could go to that receptacle, but always put it back the way you found it and then when you turn it back on, you have to go find and correct it before you you know, leave it energized. So, But just remember, because if not, if you took the white hot and hooked it to the neutral and the black hot and hooked it to the, uh, hot, the hot, what you would think would be the hot, what it's going to do is, is it could fry a piece of equipment on the other side or cause a dangerous situation, depending on what the Wahoo did on the other side of the circuit. So really encourage you guys, just go slow, take your time. I'm teaching you a way that will give you the same result every single time, time after time, and you'll end up with a brand new panel. So let's go ahead and get ready for the next step. Okay guys, so the next step is now you can start unhooking the panel at will. You've marked your uh, your red that you're gonna leave capped off. We use red tape or you can use black. We taped it up so we know not to re-energize it because it was capped off before we got there. Then we marked our black 220s from our white wires and made sure they were marked black. And we've made sure that there are no black wires on our neutral bar and if there were, we taped them white. So what we're gonna do now is, is we can start taking the panel apart as we want to. A lot of times I will take a pair of diagonal cutters they're around here somewhere oh they're hooked here in my pocket i'll take a pair of diagonal cutters and just snip the wire away from the breaker or fuse that way if i need to match that wire up later for ampacity sizing or something like that or excuse me for overcurrent your fuse or breaker that you're going to be putting it on sometimes it's helpful to know what wire came from where so i will literally just snip all these and sometimes I'll go down here to the neutral bar and the ground bar and I'll snip all those, but sometimes it's easier just to back them out by hand. So you kind of do whatever's easier. But now I completely unhook all the wires. I unhook the mains. I unhook every wire and get them unhooked. And then we're going to pick up in just a minute with the next step. Hey guys, what's up? So now we're ready for the next step. So what we've done is, is we've disconnected all of the wires. We've got them all either disconnected or loose. Some of them you leave in the lugs and you'll pull it out, but you go ahead and get them loose. And what we're gonna do now is, is we're gonna straighten all these wires. Get them nice and straight and paired together with whatever you know there is. If there is a ground, you're gonna need the hot neutral and ground of whatever pair. And we're gonna take these lock rings right here. And typically what we'll do is do something like this. So lefty, loosey, you gotta Hold your fingers up, figure which way it turns, and then you'll physically take these and you're just going to knock them off, okay? And you're going to knock all your lock rings off, and then you'll be able to pull the entire assembly out of the side of the panel. There it goes. Some of them are more stubborn than others. And if you get into one that will not, that is completely stripped and will not come off, there's another way to get the wire out. I like doing it this way because sometimes you'll save the Romex connectors, and a lot of times I'll put black plastic ones in. But let's go ahead. Sometimes these are stripped though or they're locked and you can't get them off. If that is the case, if you'll come over here, 
you can actually loosen this right here and you'll be able to physically pull the wire out while leaving the connector attached to the box. So there's a couple different ways to accomplish it. So we're gonna take our time, just like this, we're gonna work all these out. Be very careful not to cut it on the side of the panel. We're gonna take our time, work all of these out, and then we're gonna get started on this panel right here. I'm gonna shoot a quick shot in a few minutes showing you the Wadsworth inside and the odd breakers that they are. It's a very odd breaker, and I'm gonna show you what they look like. It actually has the, the, uh, the connection piece up here, it's a metal foot, very odd old breaker, one of the very first. This is an old Wadsworth, and we're going to show you what it looks like on the inside here in just a minute. And then I'm going to repeat the same steps on this panel. First, I'm going to mark off any wires with either red or black tape that have not, uh, that were not hooked up before I got here. Then I'm going to mark all of my white 220s black. Then I'm going to check and make sure that there are no black neutrals on the neutral bar. And then I can continue to dismantle this panel. Uh, remove all the Romex lock rings or connectors, uh, completely remove the panel, and then we're going to take both these panels off the wall and get prepped to put the new one on the wall. We'll be right back. Hey guys, so I'm really excited about this Wadsworth panel. It's a really cool panel, but one thing I want to show you really quick that you may have never seen, let's take a look at it. If you come here to take the cover off, there's no screws. There's no screws inside, there's no screws outside. There's these screws up here, but you can't get to them, and it wouldn't let the outer come out anyways. These ones are a little bit different. It's pretty cool. You have to get on the bottom, and there's a small little set screw in here. It happens to be loose on this one, okay? There's a small little set screw, then the bottom pops out, and then the top unhinges. And there's actually little hinges that it sets on, and it just pops in, and then you set the, set the set screw in the bottom. So it's pretty cool. And you can go ahead and... One. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and look at this panel. Come on in. All right, so this is a really cool panel. So uh, there's a provision in the code now that requires it the up to be on, on a switch or, or uh, overcurrent device, excuse me. But this is a really cool old panel. When you pull this out here, okay, and we know this is off. Our whole home is off. Always verify before you ever stick your hand with at least two forms, okay? And these are really cool breakers. So there's feet in the back, kind of like that was the original design. But these ones are metal feet. And these, uh, the, the clasp are right here on the top and they're open. It's really neat. And you set it and it slides in and the knife actually grab right into the panel. So it's a really cool old panel. It's one of the original ones that still had an overcurrent device that was a fuse. So it's like a, you know, a hybrid fuse circuit breaker box, one of the very first ones. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and go through the same process of the steps I've taught you that you do to end up with the, the same result every time. And then I'm gonna take all these wires and I'm gonna move them over here to one panel. So we're just gonna end up with one panel. So let's go ahead and we'll be back once we get these dismantled and get ready to just put the new panel on. All right guys, now we're ready for the next step. So I've got both of the panels removed. Got a lot of wires going on here. Typically I won't use, and let's look at our panel here. Typically I won't use these lower sides, but my wires are already stapled nice and neat and they're plenty long enough. So I'm actually gonna use those sides down there. I may pull some of those black Romex connectors out because these Romex connectors were in really good shape and I may reuse them. Um, I've knocked out the top holes that I need. You can just count your wires and knock out the appropriate holes, okay? And you'll just take a flathead, you can push these right through there, and then you take a pair of pliers or something and you can twist them back and forth until they pop off. Then you're gonna use the appropriate Romex connectors in order to get your wires in the box. I'm getting ready to knock out this two inch hole right here in order to go back here. We're gonna be fishing new wire through here today because we need an equipment grounding conductor because we've installed a disconnect outside. So the first thing I want you to think about when you're getting ready to put this panel up, is this the first point of disconnect in my home? If it is the first point of disconnect, you have to do this step. So if you have a meter only, no switch outside, and this is the first point of disconnect, you gotta do this first step. You come straight to your panel, and there's going to be a green screw installed somewhere right there. I've already taken this one out. There's gonna be either a green screw, or there's gonna be a strap around one of these ground bars that is screwed to the can and then you know screwed under one of these you have to physically um screw that in in this case i may have just said to take it out if it's the first point of disconnect you're going to screw that in and you make sure it's good and hard and tight and if it's connected right here you're going to leave that connection alone i'm sorry i got excited in this one i'm, I'm taking it out if this is the first point of disconnect you're going to tighten that screw all the way down in and you're going to make sure you know you can torque it and then you're going to make sure you can't fit your fingernail underneath it or if if there is a bonding strip right here, you'll see it. It just looks like a little bent piece of metal that screws to the can and then screws to these bars. 
That's what you're going to do if it's the first point of disconnect. You're going to screw the green screw in or you are going to tight, make sure the strap is tight. If this is the second point of disconnect or any point after the first point, you must separate the grounds and the neutrals. And I have videos telling you exactly why we do that on this channel. So if you look down here, I have removed the screw and I physically take that screw out and I'll tell you why. You will get a home inspector or a handyman to come in and they will screw that screw and they'll be like, oh, that screw needs to be screwed in. No, it does not if it's the second point of disconnect. Also, if you have the little bent piece of metal that is connecting the can to the neutral bar, in this case, if it's connecting the can to the neutral bar, you must disconnect that. So before you get started, if it's the first point of disconnect, you make sure that your grounds and neutrals are bonded through either a green screw, it's called the main bonding jumper, or that bent piece of metal. If it's the second point of disconnect or anywhere past the first point, you're going to make sure that you remove whatever is connecting that bar together as long as it's been listed to use as a sub panel and as a piece of service equipment. So just uh, that's a little bit of tidbit for you there. I have other videos explaining more in depth why that we do that. Right now what I'm going to do is knock out this two-inch hole. We're going to get our panel mounted. We're going to get our um, new big wires pulled in, and then I'll be able to start working the branches in. And what you're going to do is just fish these wires back back through the holes and either use these lock rings or use a connector very similar to this. So let's go ahead and we'll get ready for the next phase. I will tune back in when we've got the panel on the wall. Hey guys, I want to take a second and just show you something. If you're dealing with older homes, okay, and you have uh, some bare ground two wire circuits that either go to a range or a sub panel, this is actually going to be a neutral, and it's super important. This is a super important part of this step. So let's say this is your old range, three wire range wire. If you can replace it, if you can't, just do this. This was legal at the time, and it was allowed to carry the, well, they didn't even have any current back then because there was no digital clocks or displays or anything like that. And um, on mo you know most of the clocks, so it was just a 240 volt circuit, and this was the equipment ground. Well, with the modern panels, this is now being used as a neutral, uh, you know, almost every, all the time. And there could be quite a bit of current flowing back on this. So this needs to go, especially important if you have a panel where the grounds and neutrals need to be separated. What you're going to do is, is you are going to tape this white all the way up to the neck. And I even tape some here. Current will take any and all paths back to ground. So if this is laying against the back of the can, okay, and it is... Um, you know, it could sit there and try to get, you know, back to the source through the back of the can or through any other metal components. So you want this taped up just like a neutral. So you'll tape this up all the way up. You want to make sure nothing can come in contact with it. And then you'll turn it and make sure that you terminate to the neutral bar. I did it with the same on the right hand side over there. You'll see you want to make sure that that is now a neutral. You want to make sure that you terminate to the neutral bar. So that's exciting. And let's keep going. All right, guys, so I finally got my branch circuits worked in. I went ahead and terminated my mains. I'm working against the clock because the inspector's coming and I've got to get the power back on. But this is just a jumbled mess right now. I'm going to take my time and strip back each one of these to approximately a quarter inch, stick it inside the box. You'll take and get these all ready. Then you'll start landing your grounds and neutrals. I'm at the second point of disconnect, so I will land all the grounds to a separate bar. I have other videos teaching you about it. And then I will land all the neutrals on the neutral bar and then I will carry on. One thing I do want to point out up here, and you're, um, you know, we always try to fire draft this hole um, just so it does not, you know, it's not just like a little chimney, either blowing air in or out of there where a fire, even just environmental air. So uh, we don't want that, so we always black that off. I use duct seal in this case. There's other ways that you can achieve that. So we're going to go ahead and get these all worked in. We got the mains terminated, so if the inspector comes, we can be ready, you know, for the next stage when that time does come, and we're going to start working these branches in. So we'll be back when we get things landed. All right, guys, I'm slowly working the branches and stuff. I wanted to stop and show you something. I've got a lot of circuits I'm capping off back over here that we're going to maybe later convert into 220s later, or excuse me, into 110s from 220s. I always cap them off with some form or, or tape, and also I always still land the equipment grounds to the grounding bar. And the reason is just in case they were using that um, for a, a ground path back for something else, or if there's a fault somewhere else in the system, it'll still come back and clear. So I just wanted to point that out, even though I'm not using these. And oftentimes people will come back and use these wires, guys. And if the equipment ground's not already hooked up, they're not, you know, they may not go through the panes to find the equipment ground and hook it up. And then you're going to end up with, a, you know, really, uh, 
receptacle without a good ground on it. So you're going to end up with an open ground situation, which may cause you trouble later. So I'll go ahead and hook those grounds up. So let's keep rocking and rolling. All right, guys, so we're working this panel in, and I wanted to stop and make a point. Remember, I've always told you on panel changes, I would rather have the wire land directly to the bus bar or the breaker um, and looks as secondary. I will neaten this up some, um, but it's not like a new panel where you can really finesse it. I try to see how this one's kind of bent short. I would rather have it land directly to the bar than splice it just to get some looks out of it. That just puts another joint that could go bad. But I do want to note over here on the side, before I start landing these breakers, I'm going to torque these connections. Now... They sell all different kinds of Torx uh, wrenches, uh, Torx screwdrivers, and different things online. What that does is give you the exact tightness of all of these lugs. And it's a requirement in the 2017 and later code, um, like a written specific requirement. Um, and it's, you know, should have, they could probably pull a 110.3B issue on you before that. But now it's like a written rule. Hey, if there's a, a Torx spec, you got a Torx spec it. So really encourage you guys to invest in a Torx screwdriver. It's a very inexpensive investment. And I never have to worry. Once I hear that click, I know the thing's tight. I still check. You still tug test and all those different things. But it just lets you make up your panels, you know, with confidence and make up your devices with confidence. So let's go ahead. Let's keep grinding. And we'll pick back up in a minute. Right, so here's our panel done. It ended up looking, you know, pretty clean. Like I said, when I'm doing service changes, I'm not really worried about how clean it looks. I just want to get it landed to the breaker. And I've got someone's power off, so I've absolutely got to grind. But it ended up looking okay. Biggest thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go through and you're going to want to label your panel and, you know, take care of your customer. And then honestly, guys, the most important part of the job, remember, like I teach you on this channel, the difference between a good job and a bad job is typically five minutes. We got to clean up. I mean, we're going to clean up like we weren't here. So really encourage you guys to keep grinding, keep getting it. And thanks for sticking with us. Please like and subscribe.